Welcome. This is a video for dbapresents.com. Recently, I have noticed my colleagues developing database applications struggle with similar problems. This problem is a database versioning. It's a little bit surprising for me because a need of versioning database or schema structure is not new. I can risk even saying it's absolutely common for almost all systems based on a database. What is interesting, solving this problem is quite easy, well described and there are some tools to support it. Some of them are free. Knowing how many people do not know how to handle those issues, I have decided to make this video. Actually, I plan at least two presentations about it. In this one, I will describe the problem and show a sample solution. In the next one, I will try to show this knowledge in practice using one of the free tools available on the market. Ok, let's start. What is database versioning? By this term, I mean versioning schema structure. For example, you have a system in version 1, 2 and 3. 3 is the newest one. Uh, each of these versions has its own database schema structure, which is a set of tables, columns, foreign keys, triggers, etc. And you are currently working on version 4. During a new version development, you need to add some tables to the database, add some columns, change data types of some columns, etc. to the schema structure of version 3. So you are modifying version 3. Once the development of version 4 is complete, you need to be able to replace old versions of your system with the newest one, version 4, no matter who hosts the databases, you or your customer. The biggest question in this topic is, how can you do this? How can you upgrade the database system from version 1, 2, 3 to version 4? So those are the main questions that I would like to answer in this presentation. What is interesting, an answer to this question is problematic much more often to database developers than to application developers. If you talk to a Java developer about it, he or she will not identify it as a big problem because application developers know exactly how to handle this. They have tools and knowledge about it. Knowing that, I would like to start with application versioning just to have something to refer to. Application development and deployment process can be split to three phases. Coding, building and deployment. In the coding phase, a developer has some features to implement and defects to fix, so he or she adds new code and changes some existing code. The whole code is checked into a source code repository. Once developers think the code is ready for the next phase, the building phase starts. First, the newest source code needs to be checked out from the repository and then it can be converted to an executable binary. At the end of this phase, the developers have an executable version of the application. And now, there is time for the most crucial part of this presentation perspective – deployment. But actually, application deployment is extremely simple. It's just replacing old binaries with the newest ones. It's like a copy-paste with replacement. Simple, isn't it? Why does it work for application? There is one main reason. An application does not have a business state when it is idle, so existing installation code can be overwritten with new binaries. So how about database deployment? Is the same for a database? No, it is not. A database contains data which makes a business state of the system. This data must be preserved. A database cannot be simply overwritten. At this point, I would like to present you a concept of incremental SQL scripts that modify a database without overwriting it. At the beginning, you have a set of business or technical requirements of your system, like you need a new table B, column C needs to be wider, and a new column A is necessary in one of the tables. You need to convert them to SQL scripts that incrementally modify 
at your databases so finally it fulfills all of those requirements. All those scripts should be queued in the code repository and wait for the deployment time. During the deployment, the SQL scripts are executed in the order of adding them to the repository. So, the first is table B is created, column C is extended and column A is created. Let's see some examples. Need 1. I need a new table for storing some additional data, so I write a SQL script, like create table A. Need 2. My data requires a longer column, so SQL script is supposed to extend it. It's important to not recreate it, because I don't want to lose my data in this column. Main principle of incremental SQL scripts is to preserve data that already exists. That is pretty much it for this presentation. As I mentioned at the beginning, I plan to make another one in this topic to show how you can use a tool that is available on the market to implement this concept. Thank you for your attention and talk to you next time.